Installing MySQL is fairly straightforward. The first thing you want to do is go to dev.mysql.com and click Downloads. And from there you'll see on the left the MySQL installer link. Click that. And then we'll scroll down here to the first download link for the installer here. Click Download. And next here it's asking us to log in or sign up, but it's actually not required, so we'll just click No Thanks to start my download. And once that's downloaded, uh, bring up the folder that it's downloaded to. In my case, it's the Downloads folder. Um, just verify that you've got the MySQL installer web community installer installed there, or downloaded. And so here we'll double click to start it. We had a warning there, just click Run. There'll be a couple other warnings, or uh, like right now you'll probably have a black screen that you're looking at. It, that's because I'm being asked from the system you know, if I want to allow the program to install software, I'm going to say yes. And we'll get another one here shortly. Uh, you might get something similar too. Uh, click yes again. And once that's done, you should get the MySQL installer welcome window uh, show up. So here we're going to click on install MySQL products. The license agreement will accept the terms. Click next. Uh, here it's going to check for updates. Probably unnecessary as we just downloaded it, but probably a good, good practice to do. Click Next. Here we've got a number of different options for what setup we want. I'm going to choose Server Only, and I'd recommend this. I'll explain more when we get the download going. Uh, the Developer Default is, is, would be fine, but um, I'd recommend the Server Only. Click Next. Click Next again, and here we'll get the download started. So I, I recommend the server only just because it's a, a minimal install. Uh, the developer uh, default there has a lot of stuff it installs, a lot of different applications. The Although it says server only, it does include command line client tools. And those command line client tools are really what you're going to want to get familiar with. Uh, those are the tools that are going to be available right from development all the way through to hopefully one day when you, you um, deploy your application to production. If you're using MySQL, you're going to know how to access it, whether it's on your development machine or live on a server. So I think it's uh, a very good idea to get familiar with the command line. Um, next here, so we got the MySQL server installed. Click Next. We're going to do some configuration. Uh, here the defaults are fine, so we'll click Next. Uh, here we've got, it's asking for the MySQL root password, and for people who that don't know what this root password means, the root user, that term comes from the Unix and Linux world where the root user has full administrative privileges and the, uh, you know, the upside about using a root user is that you've got all these privileges and it's very convenient to be able to do all sorts of things, the, the, but it's a, it's a double-edged sword, right? You have all this convenience, but you also ma it makes it very easy for you to make a mistake. And, you know, in this case we've got a developer uh, system, you know, install that we're doing here. Um, I'm going to set the root password just to uh, password1, just something really simple. Uh, there's no reason to make it, in my opinion, there's no reason to make it really difficult to use. Um, but when you deploy to, to a production environment, you don't want to have, uh, you don't want to regularly use that root account because uh, just to protect yourself, right, you want to make sure that uh, the accounts that you use uh, only have the privileges that they need to use and uh, um, whereas you know with a development environment I mean if you hurt yourself you hurt yourself whereas in a production environment yeah you could accidentally drop the database and it could mean you know really big trouble so uh, in this case we're just going to set this MySQL root password we're not going to create any user accounts um, at least at this point anyway so we'll click next the uh, the service name here is fine. Click next again, and looks like it's configuring here. Should be done shortly, and there we go. Configuration complete. Click next, and installation complete, and we can click finish. So when we click on, uh, when I click my start menu here, you'll notice that there's this this uh, command line client tool, and this is a uh, just a, I guess it would be probably just a little 
batch file or program that they've included with the install that gives you access to the command line client, right? And when you click on that, it a it's asking for the password. And so this is that root password that we, that we just set. And you can enter it, and there we are, we've got the MySQL prompt. That's, uh, that's great, that's no, I mean, we can do show databases here, which will list the databases available, and you can, you know, administer the account there as, as the root user. But I want to make sure that that command line client is available when we're using the command prompt in general. And so we're going to exit out of here. And for those of you who haven't used the command prompt, if you click start, and uh, you'll notice, like, in my history here, I've actually got it here uh, for something recently used, but you might not have it there. You can find it under All Programs, and then scroll down to Accessories. And here, when you see Command Prompt, right-click on it and select Pin to Taskbar. And that's a convenient way to make it available. So if we click the Command Prompt, it, now it's asking me if I want to run it, sure. Okay, so here we've got just the general Command Prompt. And so you say, okay, well, how do I run the MySQL command line client? So what you would do is you type in MySQL and you hit enter. And it says MySQL is not recognized as an internal or external command. It's, what it's saying is it, it, doesn't, it doesn't know what, to, it doesn't recognize that, that, uh, that command. And, and so you say to yourself, well, we know, I know that we installed MySQL, so why doesn't it recognize it? Well, within the command prompt, or this, another word for it is this shell, there is this environment, okay, and, the, and it contains variables. And these variables, one of them is called path. And what the shell uses is the path variable to determine where to look for executables. So when we type in MySQL, it actually searches a list of directories in that's contained in the path variable to try and find that mysql.exe is actually what it is. Um, and it says, well, it can't find it, basically. It's not recognized. If you, in the environment, you can echo the actual path name or the path variable like this. This is how you do it in, in Windows. And you can see here that we've got a list of directories, and they're separated by semicolons. It's kind of hard to see that. But you can see how we've got a whole bunch of different directories here. And what's happening when you try to run a command, it says, OK, is there a MySQL uh, program in that directory? Is there one in that directory? Is it in that directory, in that directory, that directory? It goes on and on and on. And what it's telling us is that it searched the path, and it can't find it. OK? So the question is, how do we, how do we add, how do we modify the path to include the directory where that MySQL executable is? residing. And so first of all, what we have to do is figure out where MySQL was installed. And we, so we know we just installed it, so let's try and find it here. So we'll go to C, and I, I believe it's under Program Files. That would make sense. And you'll see here we've got MySQL and MySQL Server. And then we've got this bin directory, okay? The bin directory is where the executables reside. In a, you know, at least in the format, the directory structure for the, the MySQL server and other uh, applications. The, and you'll see here, here's that MySQL.exe. So what we need to do is take this location, right, which is defined by this path. This is like, I'm going to use the word path interchangeably with the environment variable, but this is the path to the, bin, the MySQL bin directory, okay? So we're going to right-click on that and copy it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click Start. And we're gonna, now we have to go modify that environment variable. So how do we do that? We click Start, and we right-click on Computer and go to Properties. And this brings up the system window where you can click on Advanced System Settings. And I'll scroll this down, or move this down here so you can see it. Here we got a, this button here, Environment Variables. Okay, so we've got here at the top here it says user environment variable or user variables for John and then system variables. Well, I'm just going to modify this variable path. Now you should have uh, the path variable there. I actually have a few or two or three entries in here already for uh, different 
programs that I've installed. And sometimes when you run an installer, it will add automatically add the, the executables directory to, to the path. But in this case, we're doing it manually. So we'll click Edit. And you'll, again, you'll notice, right, so you got bin, you know, from that previous path, and then you got semicolon, and then you got a new directory for a new path specified. And so all we have to do is add a semicolon, and then right-click and paste that MySQL bin directory path and add it to this path by clicking OK. And so if, if there's anyone out there that doesn't have this path variable, uh, you could add it to the system path down here, or if you wanted, you could create your own path variable. You could go new, you know, type path, and then, you know, paste in, uh, you know, your MySQL server path, right, to the bin directory. But we'll, anyway, in my case, and probably in most people's cases, you're going to have that path variable exist already. So we'll click cancel here. That's been modified, so now we'll click OK. Click OK again. And now when we go back to the prompt, if you echo the path again, you'll notice that it's the exact same path as it was before. You know, it, it didn't add what we just added. And the reason that it, why that is, is because we need to refresh the command prompt. And at least the, one, the only way I know how to do that offhand is just to restart the command prompt. The screen will go black again, click yes to run the program. And here now, now that we've restarted the command prompt, we'll do echo path. And that now should include, and it does, the C program files MySQL, MySQL server 5.6 bin, right? So now when we try to execute MySQL again, okay, so now we get an error, right? But if you look at the error, what does the error say? It says access denied for user ODBC at localhost. And that's actually good news because what that means is that the MySQL executable is on the path that the, that the system found it, right? And that response is actually coming from the database server itself. So what we need to do is specify that we want to log in as the root user, not this ODBC user. We want to do MySQL dash dash user root. And we want to specify a password by doing, there's a couple different ways, but one way to do that is to do a dash P like that. And we hit enter. And now it's asking for the password. And now we'll add password, or enter in password 1, hit enter. And you should be able to log in now and see the MySQL command prompt. And again, here we can do show databases. And you'll see that we've got the different databases there. Uh, if you want, you could create a database, create database John test. Uh, and then say show databases again. And you'll see that the, the John test database is there. So uh, we won't go into how to use MySQL in this screencast, but you c that demonstrates that um, now, you know, if we exit out of here and say exit out of the command prompt again, in future screencasts, when I say, you know, fire up the command prompt and, uh, you know, log into MySQL, well, you would just do what I just did there, fire the command prompt up, MySQL dash dash user root dash p, enter in the password. In my case, it was password one. Hit enter, and there you go. You're ready to do some MySQL administration. So that concludes the uh, the screencast for installing MySQL, and uh, hope you found it helpful.